One with Patrick. Patrick, why don't you introduce yourself? All right, uh, my name is Patrick Leonard and uh, I'm Vice President of Product Strategy for Rogue Wave Software. Okay. So we're here talking about multi-core processors and uh, taking advantage of them. What are the top things that you would recommend to customers that are interested in taking advantage of multi-core? Sure, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a big topic now a lot of people are talking about with uh, all the new hardware coming out. It's something that software developers have to think a lot more about than, uh, than they have in the past. And I guess I, the first thing I would recommend is to really think about uh, what's the nature of the, the parallelism that you're trying to achieve. Uh, there are different levels of granularity and different solutions that go along with those different approaches. Uh, so for example, if you're, uh, if you're looking at something very you know, lower level like making, making a loop parallel, uh, there are things that compilers uh, offer, there are, there are libraries that, that can help you out a lot. If you have larger components like services, uh, there are also uh, frameworks and runtimes that can, that can make that much easier and make the manageability and maintainability of those things a lot easier as well. Uh, so it's really important to really think through uh, what are you trying to achieve? Is this a new application that's being built or are you repurposing existing code? Uh, and all of those things uh, will, uh, will help guide you toward, uh, toward the right solution. Great, and I think, you know, we um, talked a lot about in the panel about um, whether, you know, the ideal thing is to design in the multi-threading uh, capability into your um, overall program algorithm, but if you can't do that, if you're taking old code that you need to migrate, you know, single-threaded code that you want to get beefed up to take advantage of all these new cores on die, um, you know, what, what would you recommend for that? Right, scenario? right. Yeah, it'd be nice if we could, uh, if we could just start over and rewrite things. That'd be a lot of fun. But <laughs> most of the time, we have we have existing applications, and, and you have to you have to make those work and bring those forward. Uh, and and uh, really, kind of the same thing. I, th I think it's it's really important to look at the architecture of your existing application um, in, in in total, not just at the parallelism. Uh, again, one of the approaches that, that we really like for, for larger applications especially is to, is to look at, at, at if those can be broken into components or services, um, then, then you, can, you can run those in parallel and take advantage of uh, multi-core, which can be multi-thread, it can be multi-process, it can be multi-server in a distributed environment. And uh, that can be a really effective way of getting the performance gains from, from multi-core hardware uh, or blade racks or distributed environments um, without having to rewrite the applications to be multi-threaded at, at the lowest level. Hi, I'm Dave Maples. I'm Vice President of North America for Alenia Software. We make profiling and debugging tools for parallel and, uh, and threaded environments and also obviously support the scalar developers as well. Great, so we're going to go ahead and ask you the same question that we asked Patrick, which is what's the number one thing developers should do when looking at uh, multi-core adoption? Well, I think the, the big challenge that everybody's facing today is multi-core technology in its, its own right. The challenge is, number one, we're getting more and more cores available for developers to start writing applications to. The applications have started off as scalar applications in many cases or very low level uh, parallel. Now they need to have tools that allow the, the regular developers to be able to develop in parallel and threaded environments easily. So what we've done is we've focused on scalability, which makes things be able to scale to very, very large numbers of processes. That fits the high-performance computing market. Then you have the bid market, which is probably the, where most of the industrial work is done. And then, of course, we focus as well on the small markets, which are people that are developing applications that were particularly scalar. Now they need to be able to take advantage of multi-core, which means they're going to need to parallelize these applications and be able to take some sort of threading or parallelization to put that into their code. The issue is that people have been used to one way of doing business. This is the first time in 30 years that they've had to change the way we, we actually program. So our, our tools are ones that are for parallel and, and threaded developers to be able to debug their code. Then we have another set of tools which are focused on being able to optimize your code and actually make it run fast. And now with the other people in the panel here, they have tools that 
were originally able, or that are focused on being able to do the development of the, the application prior to the compiling, which then requires the debugging. So we fit a little bit further down the stream, but are very, very critical as people start moving into really taking advantage of multi-core technologies. That's a great point. I mean, as a lot of times we talk about getting started on multi-core adoption, but not often do we end up talking about what do you do once you have multi-core. There's obviously going to be a debugging process and um, that kind of thing. So, uh, and the ease of use of tools is also very important and key as we get more and more cores on die, and, and you know, everyone's going to have to be multi threading uh, their application at some point. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and you know, the reason is that you know, people, people are getting all, the, the customers, our, cust our clients' clients already have multi-core. Mm. And now the clients are demanding that they be able to use the technologies they have that they already own, which means distributing uh, applications in one way or another, whether it's a thread environment, whether it's parallel, whether it's SOAS, or whether it's uh, some sort of a VM world. So those are really the ways we're going to take advantage of technology. And that's the big challenge because now the, as much as we're very pleased to have all this hardware and, and this capability, we've really thrown the problem of how to use that hardware or use those chips. As